Well, good morning. God's blessings to you as we begin this day, Thursday, October 1st, in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I cannot believe we are to the month of October. I know the weather has been telling me. I know that the leaves have been telling me. I know that uh, the calendar makes it pretty obvious, but I don't know how we got here that fast, but it's here. And uh, it's one of those months where uh, I, as a pastor at St. John's Lutheran, uh, as well as uh, many other folks within Christianity, will take time to uh, give thanks to God for all that he did through his people a little over 500 years ago, and people like Martin Luther. In fact, I was just looking at something uh, today. I came in my office, and I have this hanging up. I've had it since 2004. A uh, gentleman in the first congregation to which I was called, uh, he actually made this for me out of wood and then painted Luther's seal, Luther's rose. Uh, and there's so much meaning and significance to this this seal. Um, but yeah, Harold Keenis was a, a great guy. He was a former principal. He had been retired by the time I met him, a former organist, and his life had been in service to God and God's people. And I just thought that was such an awesome thing that he would give me something like that. But, you know, it is a re reflection on what we will celebrate at the end of this month in the Reformation of the church, where God reformed his church, called us back to his word, to the great truth of his word, and what justification is really all about, what that big word that sounds so churchy really means. But what it really means is that we've been saved by God, that there was nothing we could do uh, on our own to bring about salvation, to earn heaven, uh, our justification, being justified by God, being made right by God, was all because of Jesus Christ. And that's what scripture reveals over and over, because what a man like Martin Luther couldn't get away from was the fact that he knew he could never do enough. He could never do enough. How much is enough to earn God's favor? I mean, he knew the importance of, of good works, and just as you and I do, we should never, ever um, be seen as people who say that there's no importance to good works. We're called to live out the fruit of the Spirit. We're called to live out our faith. We're called to live out that love. We've talked about that so many times, that love that Jesus Christ has revealed to us and given to us. He is the light of the world, and we're to reflect and shine that light. We know that's important, but can you ever do enough? I mean, if your salvation, being justified by God, justified in such a way that God would look at you and say, yeah, you're in, uh, could we ever do enough? Because we always have this whole sin thing that keeps getting in the way. And for those of you who might think you don't sin that much, well, I got, well, I guess it's not good news for you. It's probably bad news. One sin is one too many. I don't care how small you think it is. It's enough for a big God to have to take action. In fact, Martin Luther once said something like this uh, when it comes to how we even look at our sinfulness. He says uh, in so many words that if you see yourself as a little sinner, you're inevitably going to see Jesus as a little Savior, meaning you're not going to see that you need that much of a Savior. You're going to think you can do some things on your own, or even worse yet, you're just going to think you're not somebody who needs a Savior. That's a big mistake a big mistake on anyone's part to ever think that way because Luther knew exactly what St. Paul knew. I'm going to read to you something that St. Paul wrote. I may have shared part of this before. I'm going to try to do it without my glasses, my readers. I don't even know what I did with them right now, but it's from Romans chapter 7 beginning at verse 15 where Paul writes this. Now keep in mind Paul was a Pharisee. He was a teacher. Um, he was somebody who knew the law backwards and forwards. And this is what he writes beginning at verse 15. He says, I don't understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I don't want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it's no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. And then in verse 18, he goes on, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I don't want to do. This I keep on doing. 
Now, if I do what I don't want to do, you following this? It is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. And that sin needs to be taken care of each and every day. You know, I was just uh, had the opportunity last night to remind our confirmation students we meet uh, once a week, and we were talking about the importance of baptism. I got to share with them uh, even video footage of my granddaughter's baptism. And to me, the essence, and I know I've shared this, the essence of a child being baptized, uh, somebody who can't respond for themselves, really puts baptism into the light in which it's written about in Scripture, meaning it is all God doing God things to us and for us, grace things for us, which is what Christ has done. And it was nothing that Ella could do on her own, my granddaughter. And what a pure picture of what God does for us each and every day, because our baptism into Christ, it wasn't just this one-time thing that we just forget about and lay aside and then say, okay, now it's on us. No, it's on Jesus, and Jesus put it on us in a way that we're covered by grace. That's what's on us now. Grace is upon us. Righteousness is upon us. Holiness is upon us. Everything that comes from Jesus is upon us because that's what goes on in our baptism. And that's what Paul could cling to because in the chapter prior to Romans 7, you got to read it. He writes about what baptism is, that we have died with Christ, been raised to new life with Christ, and that's what justifies us. It also then gives us that, that motivation to go and live now as his children, to live out the truth that we have been justified through faith in Jesus Christ, justified by faith, and we should go live it. Let's pray to him. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you as our justifier. We thank you as the one who has made us righteous and holy in the heavenly Father's sight. We know we can't do it on our own, and we thank you, Lord, for revealing that you are a big Savior because so many times we tend to look at our sins and we will categorize them. We'll put them into categories where we think one is bigger or worse than another. And the bottom line is one is too many. doesn't matter what it is. And that's why we need somebody big enough like you to come and take care of everything. And you have. So all glory and praise and honor be to you, Lord. Through your Holy Spirit, now lead us to go and live out uh, these justified lives, these new lives that we've been given, and lives that have been claimed by you in holy baptism. In your precious name we pray, amen. Jesus is our justifier, and he is a big God, a big Savior. I need him every day.